I, I'm going to begin, obviously, for people who are new to, to No Man's Land, who are going to be tuning in uh, when it uh, launches next week. Uh, what can you tell us about your character and how he fits into this into this story? So I play Nasser Yassin, who is a, a young British Muslim who ends up uh, getting caught up in the war in Syria, the civil war, in a very unusual way, where uh, he basically uh, is working for the British government to infiltrate ISIS, work his way up and gather intel for them. But really, his main intention is to actually um, save his two best friends who have joined ISIS and are basically sleepwalking their way into death. Um, so he's basically trying to save their life. And a lot of my character's journey is really about friendship and and um, and sort of their version of family, really. They're that tight as best friends. They're, they're basically brothers. Mm. I was just wondering, because I mean, it's always been a subject that's fascinated me because I went, I, I grew up in uh, Northwest London, went to school uh, in Northwest London. And one of my, and a kid in the year above me um, was joined ISIS and he became Jihadi John, who obviously was, the, and I say it's always been something that's fascinating me what can what can lead to that happening so I was wondering if you had the chance I know you're kind of based in London if you did in, in regards to research did you have the chance to meet anyone that, that knew people that maybe joined ISIS or kind of just delved into that world at all from a research perspective or do you, do you just treat it from the page no 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 not at all uh, I mean to me research is paramount I, I think um, it's interesting you say it because I, I grew up in northwest London too and and I also have two or three degrees of separation between between boys who had either gone to Syria to try and join um, and some who had succeeded and others who had got to the border in, in Turkey and failed. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a legal issue with meeting um, guys who have done that, especially if it's known, if it's public knowledge. Um, so if I did meet those kind of people, I probably wouldn't say in public. So let's just say I didn't meet them. Um, but um, also... One of the things that was really useful for me was actually the online forums. Um, again, you know, I had a, a connect of a connect who could actually get me a password um, and a login. And it was just fascinating, you know. And th there was one guy that I kind of stalked a little bit who really reminded me of my character, Nasser. I don't know if he necessarily was him, but he was giving a lot of explicit information. He was, he was in Birmingham as to, you know, who his imam was and how to approach him and basically how to you know, get in this world of, of recruitment. And I kept thinking, of why is he being so specific and so um, kind of obvious about it, albeit in a secret forum? Mm -hmm. and I just kept thinking, God, maybe this guy is working for someone. Um, but yeah, to me, research in, in terms of real people is just paramount. Even if you're playing a cartoon character, we've got to base it in some sort of emotional truth. Otherwise, you're, you're basing it on something that's not human, really, which we yeah. can't relate to, right? And it's great to see you sort of doing this because this is a big, you know, this is a big international project with a kind of cast from all over the world. And it got me thinking, we don't see British actors do this very often. It's almost the same as um, as footballers. You see the Premier League is open to sort of talent from every corner of the planet. And that yet so few English players actually go and play in Italy or Spain and stuff like that. And it seems to be quite similar with, with acting as well. Why do you think that might be? Because obviously now you've experienced it. Are you surprised that more actors don't do what you've done and, and, and go and take roles in, in different countries and work in with different studios from around the world? Yeah, I'm trying to be the Gary Lineker of acting, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing Spain. Um, no, I think, you know what, it's a really good point, actually. Uh, it's something that, that weirdly uh, I've been thinking about a lot recently because I travel a lot for, with my work. And it, it's something that for some reason, a lot of the stuff I get offered, um, I, I tend to be attracted to the stuff that has more of an international appeal. So, for example, I just did a film that uh, was all filmed in Amsterdam. And it's with this Oscar nominated um, Dutch filmmaker and a Dutch actress. And I was the only Brit on set. And it was a dream for me. I loved it. Um, even though I was playing a Brit. Um, I think also it's a sign of the times. It's the sign of, of the world and, and also the sign of, of the industry. I mean, you know, this, <laughs> this word that keeps making me laugh, diversity, which is, which is, you know, such a sort of mainstream hashtag now, I suppose is in a weird way is, is sort of a, a reaction and an offshoot of globalization and of, you know, the new generations, ours and younger being part of the internet generation. And I think, you know, you look at a lot of the TV shows now, especially. So, for example, something like Orthodox, you know, um, which has a very, you know, international cast is in Yiddish and, and all these things. You know, I think generally audiences just don't care. And I think it's, uh, it, it, it's generally it's about people wanting to 
like myself wanting to be in stories that are more international uh, and also audiences wanting to watch them. But I agree with you, maybe British actors, I think we can get a little bit seduced about just the sort of British and the American thing only. But, you know, to Hulu's credit, you know, they're, they're the big American uh, channel on this, but obviously Stars Play um, is uh, taking on all the international territory. So I think this is the sort of the, the future of where things are going. And I, I've, I've done a few interviews to this already. I interviewed Melanie and Felix and Suelia, and, and the, the latter in particular was a great, great laugh. We had a really interesting, yeah. fun conversation. Um, I just wondered about, you know, when like when you you do go um, abroad to shoot, and you are kind of, you know, in some ways, you know, I mean, in this you might be one of the only kind of English actors or in, in, in on the kind of sets on those days. It must make it so much easier to assimilate into the kind of casting crew when they're that friendly because the, oh, everyone I've spoken to associated this so far has been so engaging and kind of interesting and especially, especially Suelio who was a great interview yeah it's unusual you know and this sounds like a cliche because a lot of actors do lie and they go oh, I was like a family on set and you know we're all best mates and you know well actually this was one of my top experiences in terms of the people that I was working with and I, I don't know if that was luck well, that was just to do with everyone being from different types of cultures and being very interested in each other um, and the lack of sort of competition, if you like. Um, but yeah, no, th there was an amazing vibe. And I think also, you know, you, you got to understand, we shot in Morocco for, I think it's probably three to four months in the end. And, um, you know, we were all kind of out there away from our, our loved ones and families and, and it just created a bond. And also, I think the story itself and the way that things were written and the way that Oded directed it, we were just, all of us were always on board from the beginning that we were making a show that was very authentic, but that was apolitical. We weren't interested in that angle. We wanted to tell a very human story. And I think that just made us all feel good from the beginning, you know? And I've obviously I've mentioned at the at the start I've interviewed you before. When I interviewed you a few years ago, you were and it was James Floyd. Obviously now Krishna has been added as the the middle name to your stage. And I was wondering about the the decision behind that because I don't know if you're like me, but because my family are, um, are, are my my heritage and stuff is from Jewish refugees who moved over to the UK after the Second World War and stuff. And I'm I've become much more interested as I get older in my family background and my kind of culture and my history. Almost to a point when I was a teenager, I sort of denied it to some way and now yeah. I kind of feel like I wear it as a badge of honor I just wondered if that played into your decision to bring in uh, the name Krishna into your into your stage name sure that was that was one of many reasons and and I, and I agree with you I think part of it is to do with age you know you, you get older and I think you start to think about who you are you know a bit more and, and you dig into your heritage for example um, I think other reasons as well as well were you know I wanted in some small way to honor my mum's family you know my name being James Floyd just didn't really fit you know it, 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 everyone knew I was you know half English or, or British or whatever but no one really knew that I was half Indian and I felt like you know what that's a real shame and um, so even though Krishna is not a South Indian name which is where my family are from they're Tamils um, it is an Indian name well, it was a Hindu name uh, even though we're not Hindus uh, but it, it's it's a clearly an Indian name and, and hopefully people will kind of know right off the bat that that's part of my of my heritage and also frankly I, I just think that you know I don't know if the world needs another actor called James Floyd you know I, I think um, if, if, if hopefully my career keeps going the way it's going I'd rather see a James Krishna Floyd out there because when I grew up I, I had no James Krishna Floyd to look up to you know. Mm. I was just wondering, um, you sort of mentioned uh, that you've done this this Dutch project. Can you say much more about that at this stage? So it's, it's is it a, a movie you said the one? Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, I can. Yeah, so what I can say is that so it's written and directed by Paula van der Oost, who's uh, you know great, great filmmaker, Oscar nominated, and and just a huge big deal in in Holland. And we've been trying to do a movie together for a while, and she wrote this brilliant script uh, during the lockdown about. Um, uh, this kind of damaged British man that I play who's really obsessed with his computer and lives in a kind of digital world and it finds it hard to interact with human beings and he ends up having a relationship over FaceTime during lockdown with this charismatic beautiful Dutch woman and it's about their relationship and and it really you know it's it's a very interesting way of exploring the very nature of love and and how can that work in the modern tech age and and what's real within that and what's not. Um, so yeah, that you know, that that's what I can say about it. And it's a very exciting project. And then hopefully that'll be out at some point, you know, maybe this year, maybe early next.
And my very final thing before I was going to go was obviously usually when, when big shows like this come out, there'll be big junkets, you know, in London where, where we're all together yeah. in the same building. There'll be cast and crew screenings with friends and family. I just wondered if you've got any plans for the launch of No Man's Land next week with, you know, even just a big Zoom call afterwards with the cast or something. <laughs> is there any way to kind of commemorate its its launch or is it is it just another thing that's fallen by the wayside because of this? Damn no, year? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Do you know what? It's 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 been amazing. I, I thought when we were filming this, I thought, you know what i knew it was going to be good um uh and it turned out to be great um but i didn't think it would be something that would have quite a big campaign behind it i thought you know oh um stars play and hulu will enjoy it but they won't kind of put all their marketing dollars on the table but the truth is you know there's a massive huge um uh, advert right now in times square yeah and, uh, yeah and they've really put a lot behind it and i think it's testament to how good the show is frankly and, and I think also, you know, I think we're probably a little bit starved of television like this at the moment. You know, there, there's not much TV around. There's stuff that's sort of uh, a backlog. Uh, but actually, the truth is that, you know, um, I think a lot of these channels are, they're really in need of original, interesting content. And I think this really stands out. So, so far, so good. And, and um, I think, you know, No Man's Land at the moment is going to end up being, you know, not exactly a small deal which is nice yeah brilliant well thanks so much for your time today james it's been a real pleasure as, as always Sorry, and I'll, hopefully i'll yeah speak to you again for series, series two in person who knows <laughs> absolutely cheers Stefan. Well, take care bye-bye ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey, hey.